Hello everyone, I'm High Treason, and this is episode zero of a uh, thing about building stuff in Duke Nukem 3D levels. I don't know what we'll call it yet. Uh, I don't really care. Why episode zero? Well, this one's really to test the waters. I don't know if I'll make a, an actual series of this or what, but uh, as you might know, I've built a few levels in Duke Nukem 3D, and I've done some stuff in them that I haven't really seen anywhere else. Years ago I used to map for Shadow Warrior and more so Blood. One of the reasons for this being I always considered Duke Nukem 3D's effects system quite limited, but, well, it's really only limited by the creativity and patience of the person using it, aside from obvious limitations of things that you really just can't do. But all that aside, we're going to start small, as in we're not going to be focusing on really, really big complex machines like 24-hour clocks and stuff today. Instead, we're going to look at these flashing corona lens flare light things. You see, a few years ago I released a map called Quantum Physics that had these in, and whilst the map looks kind of dated and crap now compared to what I'm sure I could get done today, a few people asked me how this effect was done over the years. So, well, obviously if you want to put this in a level, the first thing you're going to want to do is build the thing you want the lights to be on. It doesn't really matter what it is. In this case, I've built this really, really crappy looking police truck van thing. I don't really care. It doesn't have to look very good. It just needs to do its job here, and I don't really spend much time on it, so I don't really care. Now, that's all well and good, but this is where things get interesting. You see, Duke Nukem 3D's effects have this sprite called a Respawn. It's uh, tile number 9, in case you didn't know. And the thing about the respawn is that when it's activated, it spawns whatever you tell it to spawn, assuming it's compatible, but it also spawns a teleporter star, which is this little animation. Well, that's kind of neat. Now, obviously only certain things are compatible with the respawner, but, well, that animation doesn't seem to care what the high tag is set to, as in, you don't even have to set it, you can just leave it on zero. That animation's still going to play, and... What's very useful to us here is the respawn sprite won't actually delete itself until after that animation finishes playing. Do you see where we're going with this? Because if we were to activate the respawner again before that animation finishes playing, the animation gets reset. So here's what we're going to do. Somewhere off the side of the map, you want to build a couple of ceiling doors, that's ST20, and you want to put an activator in each one with a matching low tag, in this case, 100. I guess my blood mapping history still hasn't worn off all these years later. The other thing you want to put in the doors then is an SE10, a door autoclose. You can play around with the high tag value for the delay, but there are some limitations. Psst, 4 is about the highest number you can use because this is generally half of the amount of ticks you want to pass before an activator gets fired. This implies the teleporter star animation takes around 8 or 9 ticks to complete, but I haven't actually measured. Now, it depends how you want this to work. If you want the effect to just always be going on, then one door needs to be open and one door needs to be closed. Otherwise, both doors need to be closed and you'd just put a master switch in one of them to open one of the doors and that would start the effect off. Of course, you could then stop the effect again with another master switch, but then you'd never be able to start it again unless you built a second set of doors. So we're not really going to go down that road here. We're just going to assume it always wants to be running. Next up, you want to put a unique activator sprite in each door. In this case, 101 and 102. These will match the respawn as we're going to place. However, lastly, you might want to put a GP speed in, which is tile number 10, and set it to, I don't know, maybe 1024, maybe half that. You just want to make sure the doors can move fast enough that the effect doesn't jam up and shut both doors at once, because then the lights will stop flashing, and, well, we don't really want that to happen unintentionally. You might want to play around with this, but... Yeah, it's it's really, uh, as long as it's happening quick enough, it, it doesn't matter. You can set it to a really high value if you're particularly paranoid about these things. And in fact, some of the things we might build in the future, you just have to. Now, where those lights are, is what we want to do. We want to place some respawners, but it's not as simple as just placing them right where we want the flashing light thingy to be. Instead, you have to keep in mind, and I'm sure you might know if you've played around with designing levels in this game, that respawners tend to spawn things a little ways in front of them, and so the angle is important here. We're going to have to set them slightly away from where we want the flashing corona flare thing to be, as the teleporter star will be a little ways ahead. And in this case, we do have little sectors which have a palette applied as, well, the teleporter star will take on the palette of that sector. 
and so we want them to be red and blue. And that's basically it. There's nothing else to it. As the doors open and close too fast for the animation to complete, it'll just keep being reset, and we get these nice flashing effects, which aren't brilliant, but I mean, they're kind of novel, and you don't really see it too often in levels. One thing we could do is use an SE8, an up open door lights effect, with the doors, and then insert another one linked to those in the light sectors, the little sectors that our lights are inside of, but it doesn't work very well, at least not in this case. And that's the thing, you're going to have to play with shade values and such anyway, depending on what you're building and where, everything's quite unique. I personally wouldn't use this uh, SE8 effect, but I've left it in the map so, well, you can download the example map and reverse engineer how this is done if you want to look into that yourself. And the last thing we can do is actually assemble a second set of doors that aren't linked to anything else and put a uh, music and sound effects sprite in, that's tile number five. And, well, if we get those doors to cycle rapidly, you can make some weird engine noises. It's not very good, but, I mean, if you play around with it, you can sometimes get something decent. You, you would overlay these with uh, the sectors where the, the car is, in this case. Anyway, I think that's about it. I don't really want to build anything else like this today, and we'll see how this does, if anyone finds it informative, or mildly interesting, or thinks it's absolute crap. Uh, if I get bored enough, maybe I'll make another one. I, I don't know. I could certainly see it being quite time-consuming if I were to go into some of the more complex systems, but if I do continue this, I don't think we'll be going straight up to anything huge. I think we'll work our way there slowly, so we'd probably go through things like logic gates and such before we actually tackle anything massive. But anyways, I'm High Treason, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again at some point for something. I don't know.